life after a kid isn't as minimal as we thought it'd be. My wife went into labor the day we were supposed to get the home set up, and since then we've been fighting an uphill battle. Thankfully, the kid is sleeping through the night, and we now get some time to ourselves in the morning with the help of today's sponsor, House of Marley. We've been enjoying the Stir It Up Lux wireless turntable and the Get Together Duo Bluetooth bookshelf speakers. This is a beautiful audio setup that uses Bluetooth to eliminate cluttered cable routing for a simple and clean setup. The speakers and the turntable also make use of solid, sustainably crafted bamboo, offering warmth and texture to any room, even when everything is turned off. Vinyl was something we didn't have time for when we welcomed the kid into the world, but now that we got the hang of things, we enjoy the tactile experience and listening to our favorite records on this setup. The Stirred Up Lux turntable is dense and heavy and features a glass platter for a more consistent rotational speed, ensuring all of your vinyl sounds great. Each speaker features a 15 watt bass driver and a 5 watt tweeter that can fill up any room while maintaining a small footprint. I love having the sound of vinyl in the background while I enjoy my morning coffee and work on some furniture designs for my son's nursery. If you'd like to learn more about the House of Marley turntable and speakers, you can use the link down in the description box below. Thanks again to House of Marley for sponsoring this video. With the free time I now have in the morning, I've been savoring my coffee and working on a nursery dresser I designed in SketchUp. SketchUp is a great app. It made designing and planning really easy. The only issue is the plans are done, but I have no way of picking up the four foot by eight foot plywood I designed with, since all I have is a mid-sized sedan. Fortunately, there are a couple of solutions to this problem. I could go out and buy a Cybertruck, but unfortunately, I don't have a spare 100K lying around. Thankfully, I do have a cheaper plan B, I have a tow hitch already installed in the back of my car that I use to transport my bikes, and I think I can leverage it to help me pick up some 4x8 plywood. The hardest part of the install is removing the bumper. Start by removing seven 10 millimeter bolts from the bottom of the car. I would also recommend removing three more bolts from the rear under tray to make reinstalling the bumper easier. Next, we'll remove the taillights. Start by removing the weather gasket that lines the trunk lip. We'll also remove the rear bumper trim piece. Next, pull back the trunk liner. There are two eight millimeter nuts holding in the taillights. Remove them carefully and unplug the light harness from the light. Repeat on the driver's side. Now remove the plastic trunk stops. Usually these can be removed by hand. The last thing holding the lights on the car are a set of clips. Do your best to get a good grip on the taillight and pull straight out. There are just two screws left and some fender clips holding the rear bumper in place. Use a Torx 25 to remove one screw from each rear fender well. Finally, remove three clips that hold on the fender liner on both the driver and passenger side rear fender well. Straight. My 
We're now ready to remove the bumper. I would slide something about knee height under the bumper to catch it if you were moving it by yourself. I like to start by popping the rear bumper out starting in the fender wells, then working my way along the bumper till I reach the taillights. Then I'll use my offhand to lift the bumper up to relieve some tension on the clips under the taillight and trunk opening. This will make it extremely easy to release the bumper and you won't damage any clips. Use the container I told you to place under the bumper to support the bumper while you remove the parking sensor connector. With the bumper off, you can see how the stealth hitch works. There's a receiver that will accept your two inch hitch receiver or your ball hitch. The hitch gets locked into place and the only way to remove it is with the key and pressing down on the lever. For the tow hitch upgrade, the first thing you'll need to do is install the chain stays. This part isn't so bad, but the bolts holding the hitch receiver are torqued down to 150 foot pounds. Unfortunately, the bolts are an awkward 15 16 inch. So most likely you'll have to buy an open-ended wrench and a socket if you don't already have one in that size. After removing the 15 16 bolts, place the chain stays in place and thread the bolts back through. Torque the two bolts back down to 150 foot pounds. We're halfway there, but unfortunately, I don't think the instructions do a very good job with the wiring harness. So let me show you what I learned. So overall, the stealth hitch install instructions aren't terrible, but when it comes to the wiring diagram, things can get confusing. There aren't a ton of pictures, and since I'm a visual learner and a hardware engineer, I decided to make a schematic. So the schematic is pretty simple. All you really need to do is connect your outward facing four-way connector harness, find a way to get those signals from your passenger side taillight and your driver's side taillight. If you've never seen a schematic before, it's very simple. The lines are wires and these squares or rectangles are just components that can be found throughout the car. So over here, we have our four-way connector harness. We have the main stealth hitch control module, which has all of the wires coming out of it. We have our input and output side. And then I created two simple four pin symbols for the passenger side taillight and the driver's side taillight. The key to know when it comes to schematic is these pins aren't necessarily positionally correct, but the key here with the schematic is to note the names and the colors of the wires and where they are being terminated at. These are accurate and these will make sure that you do the install correctly. The first place I would start is connecting your four-way connector harness to the stealth hitch control module. The wires here are separated such that you can thread these four wires from your four-way connector to the module that's going to sit inside the passenger side trunk well. In order to reconnect these signals back together, the kit includes four butt connectors. These butt connectors need to be crimped on to each end of the wire and then heat needs to be applied to melt the heat shrink and weather proof these connections. This part of the wiring diagram is pretty simple. All you're gonna to wanna to do for the four-way connector harness and the stealth hitch control module is connect green to green, yellow to yellow, brown to brown, and gray to gray.
For the other half of the install, we have to worry about the input to the stealth hitch control module. The input side is going to have six wires where the output had four. For the six input signals, we're going to look at the battery and the ground first. For the battery input, this module takes a 12 volt, 12 volt source that comes from the Tesla 12 volt battery. Depending on the model year you have, you either have to route the 12 volt signal or the 12 volt power from the front of the car. If you're lucky enough to have a later year Model 3, there's already a power connector that supplies 12 volts that's unoccupied underneath the bumper. The kit includes a mating connector that goes to this 12 volt connector. After you mate the two connectors together, you're left with a black unterminated wire that you're gonna need to terminate at the fuse module that's also included. The fuse module they include is terminated with red wires. There is a butt connector already installed on one end. It doesn't matter which side you use since fuses are not polarized. What's important is you can but use a butt connector to connect the 12 volt to one side of the fuse and you use another butt connector to connect the other side of the fuse to the battery input of the stealth hitch control module. Next is ground. Ground is also unterminated and you're gonna need a crimp on a termination. This termination can be terminated at a chassis ground nut that can also be found in the passenger side well. Simply loosen up the screw, slide in the termination, and then retorque down the screw to make sure that you have good contact with ground. The last four signals are probably the most important, which is your right turn signal, brake, left turn, and tail. You'll notice here that brake is not connected. Brake is a red wire that's going to be found on your module. This wire can just be left unconnected or you can cut it off if you want to. The last three signals are the right turn, left turn, tail. You're gonna take your right turn and tail signal, which are your brown and green wire, and route them to the passenger side tail light connector. At the passenger side tail light connector, you're going to use a set of clamp-on connectors. All clamp-on connectors are, are clamps that bite down into the wire and touch off on the copper inside the wire, essentially connecting two wires together. So you're going to take your right churn green wire and use a clamp-on connector to clamp it to the brown wire of the passenger side tail light. And then for the brown tail signal, you're going to use a clamp-on connector to clamp it onto the yellow wire coming off the passenger side taillight connector. The last signal is your left turn signal. All you have to do for this signal is route the yellow wire from the module to the driver's side taillight. After you route it to the driver's side taillight, use a clamp-on connector again to connect the yellow left turn wire to the red wire coming off the driver's side taillight connector. So that's pretty much it. I think the schematic does a good job of simplifying the install. Instead of having to read on how to install, you can visually see it. I will leave a link to download the schematic I made in the description box below and hopefully it can help some of you install the Stealth Hitch control module.
So it's been a couple of days since I finished installing my tow hitch. It's been raining, so I haven't been able to take it out on its maiden voyage. With that being said, we finally got a little break in the weather. So I'm about to head out to U-Haul to go rent a trailer. Um, I've never rented one before, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go. I do know that they test your lighting circuit to make sure that your car can pass your brake and turn signals. Um, so hopefully all the testing I did works out and um, the circuit works when I actually get to um, the rental facility. Um, so let's head out, rent a trailer, and go get some wood. All right, so as you can see, we got the wood home safe and sound. The tow hitch survived its maiden voyage and overall it was a really pleasant experience. For those wondering who also own a Model 3 or an electric car in general, efficiency did go down towing. It went down about 20%, so I was seeing, I was seeing about 307 watt hours per mile. And while I was towing, I was seeing closer to 370, 380. Um, so you are gonna see about a 20% hit in, in your efficiency, but overall for short trips, going to and from 
your local hardware store or picking up wood, I think it's more than satisfactory. If you couldn't tell, this is kind of a setup episode. You can think of this as a prologue to all the building we're about to do. We are gonna start with my son's dresser and then move on to organizing the garage, building some cabinets, and also addressing some things in the home that I think could be optimized by building some custom built-in shelves or cabinets. So if you're into building and you wanna see how things turn out, consider subscribing and uh, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed this episode. This is something that I wish someone would have made about how to tow with a, a Model 3. So hopefully you enjoyed it too. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon for the upcoming build. See ya.